We are just going to wait about a minute to make sure everybody can log in. All of you in Edmonton, what a beautiful sunny day we have. I can't believe we're coming to the end of August and summer is coming to a close. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to our Expedia Cruises Thursday night travel talk. Tonight, we have a special guest from Riviera Cruises. For those of you who have not been on a Zoom call before, you are muted. You do have control of your video. We would love to see your faces. I think we've all been secluded for so long. So we don't care if you're in your pajamas, if you want to turn your video on so we can see you, that would be great. You also have the ability to ask questions in the chat feature, and we will deal with them after the presentation. So my name is Lisa Antlick. I am one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises. And tonight's travel talk is being hosted by the six uh, Expedia Cruises locations in the Edmonton area. We, uh, we have been doing these travel talks for basically since travel shut down, and we are doing them to inspire you to give you knowledge and let you know what's been happening in the travel industry. So sadly, we are coming up to 18 months where travel has shut down. And if you are on this call, you probably love to travel. Travel fulfills us, that's why we do it. And if you're like me, you're probably missing it more and more. The good news is that cruise ships, whether it's ocean cruise or river cruises, have started to sail safely again in Europe and the Caribbean, and passengers that are coming back are loving the experience they're having on board. Now, that said, traveling from Canada, we still have some issues. However, I am confident that these issues will be resolved soon. So it may not be the right time to travel, but it is always the right time to plan. Studies have shown that approximately 40% of the pleasure of a trip comes from planning. And last year has been really challenging. And sometimes what got me through it is thinking about where I was going to be able to go. Maybe it'll be a river cruise, maybe a relaxing vacation with warm sand and beaches, maybe a trip to Barcelona to see where the Sagrada Familia is in construction, or maybe to Rome's Colosseum. I could also think about maybe something exotic, such as an African safari. But I think that planning and thinking about travel keeps us going and gives us something to look forward to. So whatever your dreams are, our Expedia Cruises consultants can help make them Trump come true. So now more than ever, professional advice of a travel consultant is needed. Our consultants are here to help you in the new complexities of travel and things are changing day to day and you need to have somebody who's got your back and will let you know what all the protocols are and what you need to do to get back in the water safely. At Expedia Cruises, we are committed to finding you the best value for your travel dollars. We are more than just cruises. We are a one-stop shop. We can help you with your travel insurance, your airfare, your hotel, your tours, et cetera. And best of all, we are in your neighborhood. So isn't it wonderful to be able to, to shop local? So now what I'd like to do is introduce you to our special guest, Bruce Metzendorf from Riviera Cruises. Well, good evening, everyone. And thank you for everyone joining me. I hope you could hear me okay. Uh, good, with a couple of nods that works out. I'm gonna show my screen here or attempt to um, see if this works. And there we go. Did everybody see the screen okay? All right, so again, uh, this is Travel Talk and tonight again, I'm with Riviera River Cruises. Uh, just, I'll just continue on here. Um, again, I'm the sales director for North America with Riviera River Cruises. I've been with the company uh, about uh, three and a half years or over three and a half years now uh, in the travel industry for about a little over 30 years. Um, and uh, so I've got a good handle on what's going on and in different facets of the, the business. And uh, so just give you an idea of where I started. Um, actually, if you're familiar with Club Med, I actually started in the resorts with Club Med 30 odd years ago as a geo. And if, and if you're not sure who that is, well, um, that's the people who work in the resorts from around the world. Uh, so uh, that was, God, those were the different times back then. Anyway, so um, just to go over today's agenda. So why Riviera and who we are? 
uh, our Book with Confidence program, uh, Riviera River Cruises. So we'll talk about Riviera our Cruises and what makes us different as well. And our, our Riviera Yacht Cruises and our special departure with one of our Yacht Cruises in 2023. And then we'll, at the end, we'll take some questions um, and see if you have anything that you'd like to ask uh, about any of our cruises or yacht cruises or anything else for that matter. So just a little bit about us. We actually are not a new company, though you may, we're not one of those household names. We've actually been around for 37 years. We're a UK company. Uh, and 37 years ago, we started as an outbound as a tour operator for the UK market. Uh, and our first tours back then were down to the French Riviera. Uh, so uh, that's where the kind of the name came from. But about 13 years ago, we started a river cruising and we've grown to be the number one river cruise brand in the UK market, outselling all other river cruise lines. Uh, so those ones that you may be more familiar with, the ones that you maybe wind up in your mailbox every other week or you see on TV, um, we outsell them in the UK market. Uh, so back in 19, that, uh, we had well over 40,000 passengers that traveled with us just on the river cruises and over uh, close to 130,000 passengers with our whole operations. So we're not a small company. You can feel confident booking with us, traveling with us. We're going to make sure uh, that you're going to enjoy your experience. We won a number of awards in the UK market as well as here in North America with the industry awards like Travel Weekly, Magellan Awards, and also most recently back in March uh, in the top 10 USA Today Best Reader's Choice Awards. So we are getting recognized more and more here in North America, even though we're kind of an unknown brand. Because one of the things that we feature is that we value our travel partners and we only work with travel partners. Um, so we don't take direct business. So uh, we only work with their travel uh, partners around uh, North America. And uh, so that's why we don't advertise directly to the public. So why Riviera? Well, we're the only company to offer at least five cabins with no single supplement on every single departure. We're the only company to offer entire departures exclusively with no single supplements across all categories. Most immersive itineraries, we have 20 itineraries on 10 different rivers and waterways. We're the only company to offer 100% cruise satisfaction, and we'll touch on that. We're very competitive. So we fall in the top end of the premium river cruise market just below luxury, but we're approximately 20% lower than our competitors in that same level. Our long vessels, our lead in French balconies come in at 183 square feet, uh, which is 48 square feet larger than Viking. And I'm sorry, I don't have that converted into meters for you. Um, our boats are built and operated by a company called Skillet of Switzerland. And they build the, and run the boats of a luxury competitor. They are basically identical. The crew and staff are all trained the same way. Uh, the, we spend the same amount on food products. So you're getting a very high quality product and services aboard Riviera, but a good value price point. So those are one of some of the things that make us different in this uh, market. So just as a side, side comparison, uh, we happen to be uh, the ship on the left, the Lord Byron, that's a Riviera ship. And our luxury competitor is the one on the right, uh, the Swiss Emerald. Um, so yeah, that's a, the luxury competitor, but you, you can see that the ships are basically identical. So our promise with a complete book with confidence program is called Reassuringly Riviera. So in this times of COVID, we actually have COVID cancellation protection included as standard. So if you can't travel because you've contracted COVID just prior to departure, you don't lose your trip, we're going to be able to move that for you to a future cruise with no penalty. Additionally, happy by day two, or we'll bring you home with a refund. And this is our happiness guarantee, that we're so confident in our vacations that if you're not happy by day two of your trip, and you've conveyed that to our cruise director and ho or hotel manager, we'll bring you home, pay the difference in your airfare to do that, and give you a complete refund. That's how confident we are in our experiences that you'll have with Riviera River Cruises. Exceptional onboard facilities. This is just a sample a schematic of one of our ships. Uh, our sun deck with uh, all our ships have some kind of water element, a plunge pool or overgrown type jacuzzi or hot tub, a hair and nail salon, massage studio, a fitness room, our lounges, uh, all open, and open air and very spacious, two restaurants on board, beautifully appointed staterooms, 
and all our ships have elevators to go to all the deck levels, except for the sun deck, which is fairly standard uh, that no, no river ship will have it go to the very top deck. So you still will need to be able to walk at least one flight uh, with uh, handrails. So uh, our ships include 12 five-star ships, the most, one of the most modern in all of Europe with an average age of about three years including another new ship coming out for 2022. So just to introduce you to our, our, our ships, we have our 135 meter ships, which are the Robert Burns, William Wordsworth, Emily Bronte, Oscar Wilde, Thomas Hardy, and next year, the Geoffrey Chaucer. And then our 110 meter ships, the George Eliot, Jane Austen, Lord Byron, and the William Shakespeare. And then our 80 meter ships, we have, uh, which are on the Doro River, is the Doro Elegance and Splendor. Uh, but if you notice there, we have a common theme that we name most of our ships after UK authors. Um, so names that are recognizable to you, names you could probably pronounce, those of you who uh, traveled on some of the other lines. Um, and again, you, if you've traveled on a river cruise before, you may have seen our ships and not know who we are. Uh, but again, very well appointed, beautifully open space, uh, and one of the youngest fleets, again, in the European rivers. So just taking a closer look at our deluxe balcony suite coming on just under 270 square feet. Of course, the floor to ceiling, uh, beautifully uh, appointed staterooms with all the windows and amazing views. You have a full sit out balcony here, as well as a full French balcony. Uh, some more views here with the sitting areas, uh, the valet area with a, a tea maker and coffee makers. Uh, lots of closet space, and then our beautifully appointed bathrooms. You'll notice the rainwater shower head plus a handheld, the vessel sinks, and of course, upgraded and beautiful amenities. Uh, uh, taking a closer look at our superior suite, uh, with all those amenities coming in just under 250 square feet, uh, breakfast room service is included, uh, uh, Crabtree and Evelyn L'Occitane amenities, Wi-Fi included, individually controlled air conditioning. And I put that there because there are some river cruise lines that don't let you control the temperature in your stateroom. Hair dryers, safe mini fridges, coffee and tea making facilities. And again, we're probably one of the only river cruise lines that has coffee and tea making facilities in all our staterooms, not just the suites. And because we're British, so we're going to have the coffee makers. And actually, if you enjoy your coffee, they're Nepressos. Uh, so once you figure out how to use them, they're really good. And then because also being British, we have those separate tea kettles or the tea makers as well. Uh, and uh, so you have the coffee makers and tea makers in all the staterooms, not just the suites. And then uh, something new for our higher end deck cabins is Riviera Plus, and I'll touch on that a little later on. Uh, oh, just to go back real quick, you'll notice the French balcony here. You'll see those three panel glass doors. Those class doors slide all the way over. So all you have to do is flip your chairs around and your whole stateroom becomes your, your balcony as you cruise along the river. So again, then taking a look at our lead-in French balcony at 183 square feet, all the amenities that we mentioned earlier, floor to ceiling, panoramic French balcony, again, uh, with lots of space. And you'll notice that some of these staterooms are probably larger than when you may experience on even a uh, large cruise ship that might be an ocean ship. And again, the bathrooms are fairly standard across all levels, even in uh, our lower deck cabins. Again, the, the, the marble showers, showers you can actually walk around in, so lots of space instead of being stuck in the tube. And if you've been an ocean cruise, you know what I'm talking about. Um, or you have the rainwater shower heads plus the handheld, again, in the vessel sinks. And this is our lead in uh, uh, stateroom. Uh, at 172 square feet, like if you were to close those curtains, you wouldn't even be able to tell that you're in a lower deck cabin. Uh, but again, we call these the duck view rooms or the waterline views. But this would be if you're more price sensitive, this would be a great stateroom to start with. But again, all those amenities we spoke about earlier, they're all included in our um, in all uh, staterooms. Uh, so just as you enter the ship, this is our atrium and lobby area. Looking aft or towards the back of the ship, you can see the three deck levels, the lower, middle, and upper decks. Also, the, notice that we have uh, the elevators going to, as I mentioned, to all the deck levels. And But I, I like this picture because it really invokes the old world charm of what cruising was to bring into a very modern ship. So in this atrium, 
that goes to all the, you know, you can see all through the deck levels. You have the beautiful chandeliers, but just looking at that, that staircase um, with that beautiful iron grill work with the brass railings and the floor de leaves in, embedded inside it, it really invokes that old world charm of cruising in a very modern ship. So it's very charming. And then if you were to make a 180 degree turn, uh, again, you'll see the rest of the lobby area. You have the cruise desk, or sorry, the, um, the, the tour desk, uh, the reception area, of course, the boutique, and that's where my wife goes while I'm checking in. She's already checking out what's for sale. And then straight ahead is our lounge, uh, our panoramic lounge. And this is a wide open, spacious uh, lounge area where we'll accommodate everybody in the ship. Uh, here you'll have no light nightly entertainment, a piano player every night, uh, the bar area, of course. Uh, and remember, because we're British, we're going to have afternoon tea here every day at four o'clock with the scones and the clotted cream, uh, our finger sandwiches, so you'll be able to get something to eat after you've done your touring, uh, so you're not so hungry waiting for dinner to start around seven o'clock. Uh, so this is a nice, again, open space, not compartmentalized, uh, so uh, 300 or 180 degree views of, of the river. So even if it's inclement outside, you can cruise along the river and be able to see everything along the way. Because remember when you're cruising, you actually don't want to spend the time in your cabin. You want to be either on the sun deck or in here because there's always something going on on both sides of the river. Because if you notice when you're ocean cruising, you look out on your balcony or through the window, you see ocean and what's on the other side is ocean. But as you're cruising along the river, you're gonna see beautiful, charming castles and churches and vineyards that really bring in that spirit of why you're, you're cruising along these wonderful waterways of Europe. Our sun deck, as I mentioned, uh, you know, have, we have a, a water elements or pools on all of our ships. You'll have here, you have a putting green. Some ships have a chessboard up there, but plenty of space to take in the sunshine as well as the shade and watch the views as you cruise along the river. As I mentioned, all these wonderful extra amenities like a spa for mas or a massage studio, a hair and nail salon, or a fitness room with a host of different items to, or, or exercise equipment to work out with. We have bikes on board and no, that's not for riding around the deck. That's if you wanted to grab a bike uh, and head off to, around short. So you just stop by reception, say, you know, I'd like to get a bike tomorrow, say around two o'clock, and they'll have that on shore waiting for you. Uh, you just stop by reception, you pick up the key and you unlock the bike and you're on your way to, to ride along the riverbanks or into the heart of these wonderful towns and cities that we visit along the way. And this is all complimentary. Our dining on board, we have two restaurants on most all our ships, our main dining room serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and dinner is open seating, open dining. So what's that mean? It's like some cruise lines make dinner is every night at seven o'clock. So you, if you don't come at seven, basically you don't eat. But what that leads to is people getting online to come into the dining room at 6.15, 6.30. So they can get the seat they want or sit with you or where they like or with the people they want. But with Riviera, it's open seating, open dining. You come in when you want and we'll serve uh, so you can come in anytime between seven and nine and we're going to serve till about 10. So much more relaxed environment. We feel if you're waiting online that doesn't make for a good vacation. So you come when you like whatever you like and there's plenty of space to do that. And then we have our a la carte restaurant or bistro or river view restaurant in the after the ship uh, with beautiful river views. This is for more intimate dining tables of two or tables of four. Uh, and this is a la carte restaurant is included into the cost of the cruise. So there's no additional charge, but you would need to make a reservation uh, to dine here. We do recommend that you make your reservations on the evening uh, when you board the ship that day. So you get the night and the uh, times that you prefer. Uh, but again, if you want to eat here every night, people have, I wouldn't recommend it because the food is good in both restaurants. Five star continental cuisine. Uh, and here's a sample menu. So we're going to have, as I mentioned, no, I'll take that back a step. Again, we are British and we know Brits are not necessarily known for their cuisine. They're getting better. But uh, so this is five star European continental cuisine. Our chefs are not British. They're European, mainland European. Um, so you're going to have very good, wonderful food on board the ship. Uh, this is a sample menu that you'll find on our South of France cruise. So we'll have continental selections and then we'll have local selections like you have a boule base a la Marseille or herb crusted rack of lamb, pan seared sea bass. 
So wonderful selections. Plus we can accommodate dietary, some dietary restrictions. If you're vegan, vegetarian, you may be lactose intolerant or, or, or uh, gluten-free, we'll be able to accommodate that for you. And if there's anything on the menu that doesn't suit your palate, we'll always be able to get you a piece of fish or chicken prepared to your liking. As I mentioned, breakfast room service is included with Riviera, where some lines it's not available at all, at all, or it is a surcharge. So it's included with Riviera. You just fill out a little door tag, what you like, uh, and you put it outside before you go to sleep, and it'll be delivered at the time designated. So this is some of this is one thing where we differ uh, with our drinks on board, because many of the River Cruise lines include the beer, wine, soda, and juices at lunch and dinner. Um, but we have a very good value price point, but that's the reason why that's not a reason why we don't include it. We don't include it because a lot of people in the demographic uh, of river cruising, though it's moving younger, so a lot of people don't drink or they don't drink very much and they really just don't want to pay for other people's drinking. So uh, we don't automatically include this in the cost of the cruise. However, if you do want to do that, um, for an average seven night cruise, uh, unlimited beer, wine, soda, juices, or lunch and dinner is $129 and that's out the door. So, uh, and that's on our river cruises. So if you do want to do that, uh, it, you're more than welcome to purchase that package. If you're just a, a, a teetotaler and you just have that one glass of wine at night, there's no reason to take that package because an average glass of wine is about 275 euros, which works out to about you know, 350, 375 Canadian for a glass of wine for a good um, five, uh, six ounce pour of premium wine. So uh, again, so you're gonna wind up spending less than 30, $35 for the week um, uh, in Canadian versus 129 US if you don't want it that package. Uh, so again, here's just this uh, idea of, of the drinks that we have on board and the prices. I mentioned the, the wines are 275, uh, a mixed uh, drink, uh, is about five dollar five euros uh, for a mixed cocktail or a beer two fifty euros. So again, we're not gouging the the um, the bar is not a money making proposition for us. And here's the other thing, uh, we also don't want mind if you want to bring it on board and have it in your stateroom. So if you have your favorite bottle of wine, maybe you did some wine tasting and you want to bring it back, or beer, or you just have your favorite spirits that you like, whether it be vodka, gin, scotch, or whatever. You're welcome to bring it on board and have it in your stateroom. We're not going to take it away. We just ask you to leave the bottle in your stateroom, and you can certainly pour that in a glass and walk around, uh, come up to the sun deck, and watch the river go by as you enjoy your cocktail. So again, we're very easy at uh, Riviera. We, we find that we want to make it, uh, our, we're more focused on what's better for you than what's better for us which also comes to gratuities. Again, we're a British company and net Brits don't necessarily tip, so we don't automatically include gratuities, but we leave it up to you and your uh, discretion. We do have a guideline of eight to 12 euros per person per day, but again, that's entirely up to you whether you want to participate in that or not, where you would sign it on to your shipboard account or add it to your, uh, or cash an envelope that would go to in a bin before you, um, leave the ship, and that gets equally distributed to all crew and staff on board. But again, it's entirely optional. We won't force you to do anything. So, so much is included with Riviera, a luxury cabin and suites, beautifully appointed with a host of amenities and spectacular river views, exceptional dining from early riser breakfast to midnight snacks, fascinating tours and excursions with expert guys and tour managers, complimentary coffee, tea, and refillable water bottles in your cabins plus free Wi-Fi, our professional crew is on call 24-7 to make your stay more enjoyable, and English-speaking tour guides and crew. Just as a note that on Riviera, the only language spoken on board is English. We have a very international clientele from coming around the world, but everybody on board speaks English because our home country being the UK. Uh, we also have Australia and New Zealand, so the we sell into that a little bit of, uh, of South Africa and also here in North America with U.S. English speaking Canada. So very international clientele, but everybody has a common language. We do not sell into mainland Europe. So we don't have the French, the Italians and the Germans on board or whoever. And not that that's bad, but what happens is the French just talk to the French, the Italians talk to the Italians, the Germans talk to the Germans. And then you lose more than half the ship that you can interact with. And with Riviera, everybody speaks a common language. So where can we take you? 
As I mentioned, we're on uh, 10 rivers and waterways with 20 different itineraries, uh, the Dutch waterways and uh, tour tulip time, the Rhine and Moselle, the Rhine down to Switzerland, the mine, mine into the Danube, the lower Danube all the way out to the Black Sea, which is very unique. We actually do a uh, cruise that goes all the way into the Black Sea, into the Danube Delta. In France, we have the Paris Normandy in the south of France, and then also the Douro River in Portugal. I just want to, you know, this gives you an idea of some of our itineraries and lead in price points. These prices are in USD, uh, but again, they are very advantageous. Um, we have some short cruises, four and five nighters, primarily seven night cruises, and a couple. 14 night cruises. Uh, so again, just to talk about some of the rivers, um, we have the, the Rhone and Saone, which a beautiful breathtaking scenery of Provence, the countryside uh, with the French wines and the Pope's palace and uh, just a beautiful region to sell through through Provence and the flowers are just amazing. Um, and then we have, um, oh, I can see the page here because it's being covered up. Um, the Mine River through Bavaria. Uh, this gives you the, the cuckoo clocks in the Black Forest region. Um, then we have our uh, the two the, in the north and the, the Netherlands through the Dutch waterways with the beautiful tulip time cruises. Uh, also into the um, medieval Flanders with Bruges and Ghent. Oops, did I just unshare? Sorry, folks. Is it back? Is the screen back? I see the screen with the Rhone, the Dutch waterways, okay, and the mine. Good. Sorry, I hit the wrong button there. Uh, the Danube, <laughs> at least it undid for me, um, which is you know beautiful. The Danube with the um, uh, Budapest. We do round trip Budapest, but into Bratislava and um, uh, the Vienna, Salzburg. It's just a beautiful uh, with the imperial cities, uh, the Rhine River. Again, here you can just have the spectacular castles and vineyards as you cruise down in the Rhine Gorge. It's just amazing. Uh, you'll see so many castles as you cruise down into the Rhine. Uh, the Douro River in Portugal, uh, which is a very uh, interesting meandering river uh, that's been controlled now by locks, but it was actually a river that was untamed until they actually did put locks in. Uh, of course, you'll have the Port Wines and Matus Palace and a day trip over to Salamanca in Spain, which is the oldest university and region of Spain. And then the Moselle River, again, with the beautiful vineyards that are at 45 degree banks along the rivers. Just to touch on a few of the uh, itineraries, this is, again, Bruges, Medieval Flanders, Amsterdam, and the Dutch bulb fields or the, the tulip fields. Uh, this is a seven-night cruise. It's just spectacular as you, you oh, sorry. Uh, cruise along the, uh, the Dutch waterways down into Bruges and Ghent, and uh, also up to uh, uh, Kuchenhof Gardens with the spectacular uh, floral gardens that only are operating from mid-March to mid-April. And uh, our, we run these cruises specifically during this time with the beautiful gardens that you're going to visit. And they also then the ship goes into Amsterdam. We overnight in Amsterdam, so the ship becomes your hotel, so you can go out and experience that as well. So with it, again, you're overnighting in Amsterdam. Uh, we have Amsterdam Cologne, the best of Holland Flanders. This is one of our newer cruises, um, but also taking in the same things that we do over the tulip time, but also finishing or starting in Amsterdam or finishing Cologne. It goes uh, back and forth. Um, but again, uh, taking in the Bruges area, Antwerp and the medieval Flanders, Arnhem with an overnight into Cologne, Germany. But what's really different about this cruise for 2022 is the Floriade. And if you're not familiar with this, this is um, from mid-April to mid-October. This is a one every 10 years horticultural festival. It is amazing. So if you're into flowers and horticulture and plants and vegetables and fruits, the countries have their pavilions that they, they showcase. It is absolutely an amazing thing. And this is now an included tour. Uh, for this particular cruise in 2022. And again, this is once every 10 years. It's, it's a town just next to Amsterdam, so it's a very short uh, transfer over, and it's going to be spectacular. So if you have interest in and you're into flowers and such, you're going to want to uh, hook up onto this itinerary. Uh, the Rhine and Moselle cruise taking comp combined, this is a round trip Cologne cruise. Uh, coming down and uh, at the confluence of Engelblant, so the Rhine and Moselle, going down to Kochem, Trier, Burncastle, back to Koblenz, down to Rudisheim, which is just spectacular as well. 
and, um, and then coming back to Cologne within a day tour of a uh, half day tour of Cologne, time to spend in going on yourself and then overnighting in Cologne to go out and experience that as well. So if you notice with Riviera, that will overnight in usually the last city. So um, if you don't have the time to extend or you want to uh, get the, that pre or post, but you want to see the city that you began or started in, we do that with Riviera with that overnight. Here's a picture of Hokum. You'll see the beautiful castles. Again, you'll see how the vineyards just line the river bank, as I mentioned, 45 degree banks. And this is also another wonderful cruise that's very popular is the Rhine cruise to Switzerland. But we do this differently um, because we start in Cologne, Germany. All other cruise lines, they start in Amsterdam and they work their way down the river, seeing the same things that we'll see with Riviera, but they arrive in Switzerland or Basel, Switzerland on the eighth morning. And what happens? They get off the ship and they go home. And you don't see Switzerland unless you've paid to see extra to stay over, or usually a little bit that you see on the way to the airport to your transfer to fly home. But with Riviera, because we start in Cologne, we work our way down the river and we arrive in Basel on the seventh morning. So we're including that full day trip to Lucerne and then over to Venice Oberlin with the beautiful vistas of the French Alps region, taking the tram up the mountain. So you have these spectacular Alps views that you're going to be able to experience with Riviera that you're not gonna get included with any other cruise line. And then we have our Blue Danube cruise. Um, this is round trip Budapest. And the reason we do this, because we most cruise lines will start in Budapest and finish out in Germany someplace, is that when all those other cruise lines, they finish out in Germany, Germany, it's a minimum of a two and a half hour, hour transfer to get to the airport three hours ahead of time to get your flight home. So it really takes away from the experience. And we put some thought into this because if we do a round trip uh, Budapest, you're going to arrive back in Budapest, we overnight there as well. So you can go out and experience that and get a more encompassing uh, experience with Riviera, but it's only a 25 minute transfer to the airport, which makes that difference. And you're going to see everything else that everyone else sees except that quick overnight in Germany where you're going to uh, leave the ship early in the morning, uh, probably before the sun comes up. Uh, but what's also different about this, again, you're going to see Estegam and Bratislava, Dernstein Melk. In Linz, uh, we have included day tour of Salzburg, where other cruise lines might offer it as an option. It's included with us. And then uh, back to Vienna, spending the entire day there. In the evening in Vienna, we're going to bring on a string quartet to play for you, because Vienna being the heart of the music, uh, uh, and, and symphonies and everything else of Europe. It's just beautiful. You're going to be able to have a full day, half day tour there and, and spend the rest of the day experiencing Vienna um, on your own or, or setting up a, a at cost tour um, through our concierge or tour manager. We'll customize anything for you. At, again, only at cost. They won't charge you anything extra. And again, coming back to Budapest with an afternoon tour and seeing the spas and the beautiful city and overnighting there, we can go out and experience a, a, a Budapest, which is just a spectacular city. It really is. Again, there's a shot of Budapest and the parliament building. It's the most famous uh, uh, scenes that you might uh, be familiar with. Uh, Salzburg and Salzburg Castle that you can take the tram up to the top and visit that and it's just amazing. Uh, and, and of course, back in Salzburg, if you're a Sound of Music fan, this is not to be missed, of course, as well, because you'll see many of the sites where the movie was filmed. And then also Vienna uh, and around the main square area. And with uh, you could do a tour also or uh, take an optional to see the uh, Spanish Riding School with the Lippins and Stallions. Uh, it just all these different things that you can do, and also the included tours. Um, also, with us uh, is our Paris Normandy cruise, uh, round trip Paris again, overnighting in the Paris on the return, um, but again focusing uh, from Honfleur and then traveling over to the the Normandy beaches and the whole history of that area uh, from World War II. And then uh, our Burgundy and Rhone and Provence cruise, as I mentioned. Uh, Avion to Lyon, or Lyon to Avion, you have the Pope's Palace. I'm just going to take back, uh, so you have the Pointe de Garde. Uh, also, what's different with us is that we cruise up to Chalon into the Bone region of, of, of France with all the amazing vineyards and wines up there. A lot of cruise lines will only do that as a bus or day trip. We, we actually cruise up and come back. And, uh, and a couple of our Christmas market cruises, our Enchanting Rhine cruise. And, Chris, and Yuletide Market starting in Cologne. We do them a little differently, uh, four nights, five days, and five nights, six days for our, our round trip Budapest and the Imperial Cities. 
but they are just spectacular taking in all the sites of the Christmas markets. And if you haven't done a Christmas market cruise, it is not about the markets. It's about the food, the wine, the spirit of the season, the camaraderie, walking around and with your glue wine or a beer and, and, or your schnitzel or, or whatever that may be and really experiencing that. Uh, again, we have the Danube and Imperial Cities in Yuletai markets, like as I mentioned, five nights, uh, uh, six days round trip Budapest, uh, again with that overnight in Budapest, uh, taking in the Bratislava and Vienna, the markets and just spectacular. And they are cruising. So if you're interested for later this season and you want to join us uh, in December of this year, you're welcome to contact your uh, Expedia Cruise Travel Advisor who's going to help you out with that. Again, another shot of Budapest and St. Stephen's uh, Cathedral there. So also I want to talk about our Adriatic yacht cruises. This is something we just launched this past year. These are beautiful 38 passenger yacht cruises um, that are just spectacular that are run uh, seven night itineraries from Split and Dubrovnik and taking in all these beautiful places along the Adriatic coast uh, from Havar and Kuchula, uh, Kormadi, Zadar, Kirka National Park with these wonderful waterfalls up in the north area of Rab and, and into uh, Bosnia with Mostar, which is a wonderful rebuilt city um, uh, taking uh, from a day trip for one of the cruises. It's just beautiful. But we're really gonna talk about this wonderful cruise on the MS Adri Adriatic Sun, Sun that we have scheduled with uh, our partners here at Expedia. Uh, this is exclusive group departure from Split, taking in Dubrovnik in the splendors of Dalmatia and July 15th to the 22nd of 2023. And yes, it sounds so far off, but we are booking that now. Uh, this particular ship, the Adriatic Sun, was built in 2018. As I mentioned, it's only 38 guests maximum. Uh, we do have a tour, a tour uh, manager on board that's going to help as well along the way and act as a concierge where need be and point out all the wonderful sites as we tour through these amazing cities. Um, this gives you a, a little interest of the deck plan that's offered, lower uh, and upper deck staterooms, and also one in the middle there uh, at different category levels. Um, and just again, and dining areas uh, to take in and, and as you cruise along the Adriatic coast, it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, just one of the samples of the staterooms, this one is on the lower deck with the portholes. We do have upper decks with their own little private balconies as well. Uh, very spacious, large bathrooms, uh, again, with the, the vessel sinks, walk-in showers, so you, you don't feel cramped uh, with our cruises on these uh, yachts. Uh, beautiful dining area, a bar area, of course, outside, outside sitting areas as you cruise along. And these cruises run a little differently. They're not as inclusive where on, on, on the river cruises, all your meals are included. This is the beauty and charm of taking these cruises is going in and dining and experiencing it like a local into these wonderful sports and areas that we cruise into. So you'll have some lunches included, some dinners included, but you'll want to sit and dine in, in these wonderful cities, as I talked about, uh, and you'll see as we go along, um, that make this such a wonderful and amazing experience. Uh, so this, again, uh, particular cruise is round trip split. Uh, and as we come down, uh, stopping in Corchola, um, Mijet, the into Dubrovnik, with, uh, again, that beautiful section of uh, and, and cities as we stop along the way, coming back up through uh, Havar, Brock, and then home back to our home part in Split. Uh, you'll make snorkeling stops along the way in these un, you know, beautiful uh, beaches that are just, uh, uh, you know, there's nobody on them. Uh, so, and you'll, or just an area where we know there's a reef and we'll stop and we'll stay later in, in overnights into the cities and towns that we'll stop in. So you can go out and dine and relax and, and take in the local culture, be like a local. That's what's the charm of this. And, and, and sitting in a cafe and, and watching the people and maybe, you know, you might not speak the language and trying to figure out what they're talking about. That's really the charm of, of sitting and, and experiencing this whole region. So we'll start and split. And you'll also find in this region of, of the, the Adriatic, uh, so back in the days of yore or whatever you like to call it, they had very strong ties to Venice. So you'll saw a lot, see a lot of similar architecture uh, to Venice that you'll see in this region of uh, the Adriatic. 
So uh, Kurtrula with this stop and uh, this little peninsula that sticks out and the ship just coming right into port as you walk through these very winding and little narrow streets uh, and, and walking up and, and taking in some other sights from the top. One of the gates of the city that as you walk through, um, again, just spectacular things to see as you wind through the streets uh, and our tour guide giving you wonderful experiences, pointing some of the history out and also finding maybe a place to, to, to have lunch or dinner. Uh, Dubrovnik, of course, everybody's heard of that. Um, it's a beautiful city. Uh, again, port city, these are all just amazing ports. As you wind through, you can see the forts that protected them. Uh, and again, winding through these little cities and side streets uh, that make up this, this amazing uh, town along the water here. Uh, Havar, uh, again, the island is just spectacular. This is a very large tourist destination, Havar. People love going here, Havar and Zadar. And, um, Again, you can see the big yachts that are in there as well. Uh, so not quite Monte Carlo, but yeah, it's got that feel to it as well. And then Brock, this beach that just sticks out as a point, it, it actually changes that point area, changes with the seasons and the tides. So here you see it kind of a little bit to the, the uh, dipping to the to um, lower, and then sometimes it's very straight and pointy all the way out, and sometimes it swings up a little bit, and that whole beach actually changes. Uh, so, uh, and you know, the boats, and we'll do a snorkeling stop there as well. So that's pretty much on that. Just to give you an idea, I wanted to touch a little bit on our solo cruises because some of you might be traveling on your own and you don't want to feel uncomfortable, uh, or you don't want to pay double. So again, as I mentioned. On every single departure that we do, we offer an average of five cabins uh, for, our, all our, for our clients on every single sailing for solo travelers with no single supplement. So what that means is if you normally travel by yourself, you usually have to pay for a full stateroom for two people. But with Riviera, that means you're only paying for yourself and just once. And these are regular double cabins. We just designate a handful of them for solo travelers with no supplement. So you're only paying for yourself. But we also offer solo traveler cruises. Now, this is where, where the entire ship, every single stateroom and suite is for solos with no supplement. Uh, most of those dates are, are uh, starting to operate or, uh, or kind of some of them, unfortunately, have passed that we didn't operate, but we're getting ready to. Uh, so we are starting up these uh, for 21 and certainly for 22. And we we'll, should be adding some more cruise. The yellow boxes are our river cruises that offer, again, tire departures with no single supplement across all categories. So if you wanted the full balcony suite, uh, you can do that and still only pay for yourself. So we will not sell any double cabins. So in our largest ship, where we have a maximum of 167 guests or 86 staterooms, with some of those being the solos, we will max out at 86 passengers. Now, the blue boxes you see there, and they're unfortunately, uh, I think that August one, is that running? I'm not, I don't remember, but certainly those October one dates, the August one, I think that one is the one that first started. So that might have started this week as well. Um, uh, that particular, those blue boxes are our yacht cruises. So we are actually offering solo cruises on our yachts as well. And those, uh, so you're talking about 38 in regular passengers. So normally we're only going to max out those particular departures on uh, with only 19 total passengers on board without single supplement, as I mentioned. So if you're again, if you're that solo traveler and you're interested in something different like this, please do reach out to your uh, Expedia Cruise Travel Advisor and they'll be happy to help you. Uh, as I mentioned, all excursions are included in every port. We offer an excursion. We have the Vox boxes or the radios that will give you a little hand headset that puts over your ear so you can walk along the way at your own pace and still hear the tour guide tell you what's going on without having to be on top of them and, and hearing all the background city noise. Um, and really, that's that's what's up. So again, I thank you all for your time. Um, I think we're, I told them I'd go around 45 minutes and we're just shy of that. So thank you very much. Uh, I think Lisa is going to come back on and hopefully if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Well, thank you, Bruce. Oh my, you know what? Every time I see a presentation, I, it just re, it reiterates to me how much I miss travel. <laughs> and I think many of us feel that way right now. We do have a couple questions. So you mentioned that sailing um, in 2023. 
are the 2023 itineraries for both your yacht as well as the river cruises open for booking yet? Actually, no, they're not. I expect okay. to have them in October, November, December, the latest. Uh, well, they come to us in, in, in sections, but we did get this special special dispensation for that 23 yacht cruise that we have the group on. <laughs> okay. And is there still some space for 2022? I, I've been noticing for some clients that we're looking and things are starting to sell out a little bit. No, we actually have good availability on, okay. though, you know, we did have a lot of people transfer over from last year into, into 22 in this, in this year. Uh, but honestly, there's, there's good availability um, on most of our cruises. Some of those solo cabins on the uh, of those five cabins may not be as available because they tend to go early, but they are available uh, for sure, depending on the cruise. Um, so our market's a little different than you'll find with some of the other cruise lines because people, as you notice, do tend to book out a year and a year and a half, two years out. Um, but the bulk of our clients are coming from the UK. So yeah, they do tend to book early, but they can be last minute bookers, not like they're coming here from us from the North American market, because we tend to book way in advance because we're talking about those flights that we have to get way in advance. And, you know, it's, it's a, you know, from, from your area, it's, it's a, you know, eight to 10 hour flight over to uh, um, into Europe, mainland Europe or a connection or whatever that may be um, where in the UK it's, you know, it's an hour flight. So a lot of times we get people of the UK markets booking, you know, last minute. Now we do have uh, our, our programs and, uh, and most people are pretty well set around 90 days out, you know, or for sure, because that's our final payment anyway, 90 days. Uh, but uh, sometimes, you know, a brick can say, oh, you know what, uh, I got some time, let's go away next month, because it's an hour flight and bam, they'll, they'll go away. It's like, you know, it's like you going down to, you know, or, or myself even, you know, let's go to Florida for, you know, last minute or, you know, a month out. We can arrange that, but we wouldn't necessarily last minute plan a trip to Europe, where in the UK they can, you know, into mainland Europe is not a big deal. So we have that availability. So if you're looking at 22, by all means, uh, talk to your travel advisor and we'll get that set up for you as well. That, sound, that sounds wonderful. One of the questions we always ask in Canada is when's the best time? I know some two of the, the best itineraries are the Danube and the Rhine. In your opinion, what's the best time of year to go? You know what? <sighs> It's, it's, it's interesting, you know, it, it, it's whatever you feel is best for you. Now we operate really from early April through late October, essentially, you know, we do do some early, late, late March and into early November, but you know, it's April through no, October. It's when you want to travel. Now, listen, I have areas of the country that uh, in North America that, you know, they'll go over the entire summertime. Um, and I, they don't, doesn't matter that when, when that happens to be. And then I have areas Get like you know up by you you've got a beautiful summer july august you don't want to leave where you are because that's the best time of the year right so you might want to say you know but uh, you know june's okay or september's okay now for us the uk market uh the, it's very funny because again being bulk of the clients they don't want to leave september october sorry i'll take that july july and august they stay home because they think mainland Europe is too hot. So they don't want to go. They don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. So September is a peak month for us. But it, it essentially, um, you're going to get rest assured May, June, September, October, you're going to still have great weather. I mean, I've been late October. I've had amazing weather in Europe, even in the Danube, where you think it's going to be cold. Early August, to, uh, sorry, early April, I've been on the Danube. And it was, you know, close to 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or, or, you know, 24 degrees, 23 degrees, uh, and in sunshine. And this was, in, you know, just after Easter a few years back, and I was like, nothing wrong with this weather. And it's also, you're not necessarily there for the, to sit out in the sun. It's not a beach vacation. So you're touring. So again, it's up to you when you want to travel. I think the best price points, you're going to find the best price points as far as if you're looking for that, it's going to be uh, uh, April and October. So again, if you're looking for price or you're looking for a beautiful time, you know, it can be any time. Right. You had mentioned the Paris Normandy and talking about going to the Normandy beaches. Obviously, we're Canadians. Do you go to the Canadian beaches at all? Um, so 
we just started launching the launch this. And so the different, we have the American beaches and we have the British beaches. And I think some of the British beaches, the Canadians are also engaged, uh, go, went to as well. Okay, all right. I think, uh, I, I'm, again, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, um, there's a question to repeat the date for the 2023 group sailing. That was that July 15th to the 22nd, 2023? On the Adriatic? Uh, yes, I believe that was it. Yes. All yes. Right. Uh, question vaccination requirements. Good question. Um, and uh, this is something that uh, we changed up just recently that we are requiring all passengers to be vaccinated to cruise. Um, okay. If your country, like the US, or I'm, I'm not sure, but does require a negative COVID test to return. We will do that on board the ship uh, prior to your departure. So you have that in a time. If, now, if you're extending a, on a post cruise or a post hotel stay, um, we would try to time that, you know, the next day, if you're only staying one extra night. So it's still within that 72 hour time frame that you need to take that test. Okay. And in Canada right now, we have many people have mixed vaccines, AstraZeneca and Pfizer, AstraZeneca and Moderna. Do you have an issue with mixed vaccines? And again, that is um, that would be on a country uh, case. It really depends on the country and whether they accept a mixed vaccine. I have not, I'm not aware of which countries uh, are that falls into right now. So, and, uh, and and you know what? One of the things, Bruce, is that is something that is an issue right now. Three months from now, it may not be. And as you know, and probably everybody else on the webinar knows, everything is changing every single day. So our challenge as travel agents is I can tell you what it is today, but I have no idea what it's going to be tomorrow or the next day. Exactly. Uh, there was a question. Thank you. There was a question about the the will this uh, webinar be recorded? And Diane, yes, it'll be on our YouTube channel, posted sometime probably tomorrow. So thank you, Bruce. Um, fabulous, fabulous presentation. I think you gave us a real good outlook of what we can enjoy either on a small yacht or on a wonderful river cruise. You know, for many of us, we've lost two years of vacations. The demand is high and we are already starting to see, as Bruce said, people who had cruises canceled are moving into 2022. So if you're thinking about going, and especially when you're talking about flexible booking policies and flexible cancellation and moving policies, there's no reason not to, not to look at something you can look forward to. So please reach out to your consultant if you have any questions. Let us help you start planning. We thank you for your past vacations. We thank you for your future vacations. And please reach out to us. A reminder, you can follow us on Facebook as well as check out our YouTube channel. And remember that next week, if you can join us, we are going to be featuring Viking cruises, featuring ocean cruises. So thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Have a lovely evening. Good night. Good night.